Hi, and welcome to a new tutorial. Again, ImageLine messed up my schedule and released a new beta with again great features I need to show you. This is like rapid fire at the moment. They release all this cool new stuff faster than I can use it. So let's dive directly in. Pitch Shifter, all plugins edition. Real time pitch shifting effect with two pitch shifting algorithms and XY pitch form and control. This new and long requested native effect is included just for the holder of all plugins edition. It's probably a good idea to think about upgrading to the complete bundle, as first it's on sale at the moment, and second you get your hands on the complete 48 instruments and now 77 effect plugins. This is probably the biggest native collection you can include into your door natively for a really good price. I am not affiliated with ImageLine, so this is my honest opinion. The sale is still ongoing until November the 30th. But back to the new plugin. The pitch shifter is a real-time pitch shifting effect, which different to the frequency shifter we got lately, keeps the harmonic relationship when shifting up or down. It got two separate engines, voice and music. The voice mode is a formant mode. As the name suggests, specialized for pitch shifting or form and manipulating voices or other monophonic material. The music mode is a generic granular engine. Here are just some quick and dirty examples of what it can do for vocals. Across the open ocean. Across the open ocean. Across the open ocean I see the moments drifting away So far from starting Holding on to yesterday Adding some different tones to a pad or spicing up drum sounds. I was never into pitch shifting before, therefore my examples are perhaps a bit basic, but I hope you can see the potential in there. Another great addition is the new Chorus plugin. It's called Vintage Chorus and it's added to the signature bundle and upwards. It's inspired by and modeled after the Roland Juno 6 Bucket Brigade Delay BBD chorus, which is perhaps the most famous chorus of the last century because of its very smooth and rich sound. Like the original, it got two pre-programmed modes. And smart as they are, they called it mode 1 and 2. On the original there were a third option by pressing both knobs together. And of course we can do that too by holding shift and left clicking the missing knob. These three options cannot be modified as the term pre-programmed let us already assume. So the following two sections are grayed out. We got additionally an added mode with which we can use the great sound of this plugin with our own settings. In this mode all sections become active and we can modify our settings. And it sounds great. Great for just thickening a simple thought to Thank mm -hmm. you. 
or a simple guitar. Now something many people were begging for, on-track controls for audio tracks. We can choose now directly on the track without any right-click menu the input, the recording location, monitoring options and finally we have a record arm button. Please keep in mind that your tracks have to have a certain height to make these controls visible. If you are like me and have everything at 50%, they are not visible. You need to have the track size at least at 100% for being able to see them. General settings. Choose sharp or flat naming for black notes where displayed. We are now able to change the way the black keys are displayed in FL Studio, either as sharps or as flats. At the moment we can only change this globally via the general options, which need a restart of FL Studio. But Scott already said this shall be changed, to set it on a pattern base in future. When changing languages, warnings are now shown in multiple languages if necessary. I'm not sure if this still belonged to the previous point or is meant in general. I couldn't make it happen to see any warning in multiple languages, so nothing to demonstrate for me here. There's a new function for Flex. Dump score to piano roll feature for patches with included scores. Here in the pitch panel we got now a new button, which most likely will light up when a patch contains any score, like the Apeciator button on this patch here. I was hunting a little bit to show an example, but in the short amount of time I didn't found any preset where this button lit up. But basically the procedure will be very easy. Select the pattern you like to dump the score to and just hit this button like we know it from other places in FL Studio. There was a new option added for the FPC, which might be helpful for people using a certain MIDI controller like Fire that the chosen note layout is kept when changing presets. There were some changes to online licensing and unlocking the product too. But now comes a biggie again. Envelope editors now show bar numbers. After the new automation clip editor was released in the betas before, it quickly became clear that longer clips lacked orientation as where to one was located. Not any longer. Now the automation editor shows the bar numbers. Thanks very much. But please be careful. As known issue, they stated that this just shows the correct values if as global setting line or bar is chosen. For me, it works just with line. Even bar shows nonsense. Finally, they improved scripting and there were lots of bug fixes, which are always welcome. That's it for this beta. There are lots of great new additions in here and I know one biggie which they announced for the next one. So chances are high that we will see even more great news in this cycle. And this next big new feature will be really, really a game changer. Have a good time, stay tuned and thank you for watching.